All of the gear we use for backpacking in 2021. <laughs> hey everybody. Hello. Welcome to a different video. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> This is our house, and today we are going to talk about all of the backpacking gear that we use. Pretty much everything from backpacks to camera gear and even the clothes that we wear because we get questions about it every once in a while, so we figured we would just get it all out there. That way, uh, this spring and summer, when you see us out backpacking, you'll know exactly what gear we're using. Yep. And, I don't know, gear videos are cool, so. This is all the gear we use for backpacking. <laughs> so, it would be kind of hard to go backpacking without a backpack. Yeah, that's the most important part of backpacking. <laughs> so, I have two bags. Victoria I have has one. One. But, whatever. One bag is perfectly fine. <laughs> so, we both use the REI Flash series bags. I have the men's 65 liter. And I have the woman's 60 liter. And we, this is actually our first bag that we ever had when we started backpacking. And we still use them like And it's been like time. three or four years now. And number one, one thing that I really like about this, it's super affordable. So like anyone could buy this We paid like $100 or like 120 bucks. And so. it's not cheap material. It's actually super durable, no rips and tears yet. And then we use this every year a lot. Yeah, and so we really like these bags. Um, like I said, I have two bags. So the REI Flash and the Mammut Duke and Spine. Um, but I tend to prefer the REI Flash, especially when we're shooting videos, because this bag has tons of pockets, which is great for organization. I know like exactly where my camera batteries are, I know where the snacks are, and I don't have to dig through the entire bag to find that stuff. Whereas the Mammut bag is pretty much just one big pocket. So like the batteries fall to the bottom and it's just a little less organized. So depending on the trip, if I want to be more organized, I'll take this one. If I want to pack a little bit lighter, I'll take this one, but. And backpacks are totally preference. So you can definitely. have your own features or whatever you want for your specific needs. But we just like this because it does a job. It's simple and we don't have all those fancy compartments or anything like that. Just gives us a bare minimum. Right. And but we're not always trying to save weight either. Like a mm -hmm. lot of times we, you know, we want to be comfortable. And again, we're bringing a lot of camera gear and stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, the REI Flash tends to be my go-to bag, especially if I'm gonna be doing like three nights or more. And the Mammut bag is the bag that I'll use when like maybe I'm not shooting a video or if I'm gonna be sleeping in my hammock or something like that and I can pack a little bit lighter, then I'll choose this bag. Again, super comfortable, super durable. I really like it. It's just the organization is a little more challenging. So we tend to use the REI Flash more than anything. So the tent that we use is the North Face Talus 2. Now, I'm pretty sure they don't even make this tent anymore, <laughs> um, but I think the next one is the Storm Break 2, which is like almost the identical tent. Mm -hmm. So the main reason we got this tent is because it's orange. Yeah, the rain fly <laughs> that it comes with is orange. Yeah, so originally we had like a gray tent and being like photo and video people, it wasn't really working. It was kind of blending into the trees, blending into the dirt. So we got this one because we're like, it's orange. <laughs> um, but it's been working super well. I mean, if you saw our Banff video, we used it in the rain. We've used it in the wind. And again, super durable. It's pretty lightweight, pretty packable, as you can see, compared to a small person, compared to a big person. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we usually just put this straight into our backpack and then Victoria carries the stakes and the poles. And yeah, it's pretty lightweight. It's not like an ultralight backpacking tent, but it works for us, especially being two people, you know, we can kind of split it up, but sets up super easy. You guys have seen us set it up like a hundred times in our videos, um, but we really like it. Yeah, it's yeah. large enough inside when it has a small enough footprint so we can pretty much set it up anywhere we want. It gets good airflow, protects you from the wind and the rain, 
and it looks really good <laughs> in photos and videos. So these are our sleeping bags. This is the Mamut Perform sleeping bag. It's part of their recovery series and they're really great. They're awesome. Full disclaimer, we did get these sleeping bags for free, but that has no effect whatsoever on what we're about to tell you. Yeah, because this has been a game changer. We've had three sleeping bags so far, and this is by far the best sleeping bag that we've Yes, had. originally we had a super cheap sleeping bag from Amazon, which worked fine when we were getting started out. So if you're brand new to backpacking, sure, a cheap one off Amazon, it'll work Whatever just fine. Whatever gets you there. out there. Exactly. <laughs> but eventually when you start getting out into cold temperatures or you start getting a little more serious about it, you're gonna want something like this. Uh, number one, because of the packability, like this thing is probably half as big as our last sleeping bag. Mm -hmm. So it's super packable, it's super lightweight, and most importantly, it's super warm too. Yeah, this is rated at 20 degrees Fahrenheit, but there have been nights where it's definitely below 20 degrees. We've had them in way below 20 degrees. It does yeah. help that there's two of us in the tent, yeah. so that keeps us a little bit warmer, keep that in mind. But yeah, I mean, we've used them on like super snowy days and super cold winter days as well, so. And also it's lightweight enough though too that you can wear this in the summer and be just fine without, you know, dripping sweat in the middle of the night. Yeah, so one thing that really helps in the summer because it is a warmer bag is the fact that it has this vertical zipper, which I'll never buy another sleeping bag that doesn't have a vertical zipper because it's just been so much more convenient. If you've ever used a traditional bag that has a side zipper, they always catch and snag and they're annoying. Yeah, you Whereas can't this find one, it in the middle of the night. This one never catches, it never snags. It's super yeah. easy to just change your ventilation, you know? You get a little hot, zip it down, you get a little cold, zip it back up, you don't even have to think about it. Yeah. So yeah, the Mammut Perform uh, sleeping bag. It's the bag that we use for pretty much everything. Sleeping pads. Pretty much an air mattress. Yes, it's something you blow up and it keeps you off the ground. <laughs> Ours is the Climate Static V and it's pretty good. It's definitely not the best pad on the market. It's a little bit cheaper, which is why we bought it. Um, <laughs> but it totally does the job. Keeps you warmer than you know sleeping right on the ground. Prevents any like rocks or bumps from disturbing your sleep and yeah, it just makes sleeping in the wilderness a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, a couple things that we like about it is number one, the way that the cells are designed, you don't really roll off of your pad too much. Yeah, and they're pretty comfortable. They're comfortable. And also the second thing is packability. It's super lightweight, easy to pack into your bag. It's like the size of a Nalgene, yep. basically. So. And yeah. So overall, they do the job. These are the sleeping pads we're gonna be using at least for our first couple of trips but we're actually thinking about upgrading later this season. So we'll let you guys know if we get anything new, but for now, these are the pads we're gonna be using. Pillows. That's pretty much it. You blow air into it and it gives you something to put your head on. It's light and it's not comfortable. I mean, it's, you're basically putting your head on like a pool toy, so. <laughs> <laughs> but they work. <laughs> and fuel. The best part of every adventure. You guys already know we're big time food people and we wouldn't be able to eat good meals in the backcountry without this bad boy. So this is the Camp Chef Striker. I mean, it pretty much just boils water for us. Yeah, the only thing we use it for is to boil water and for both of us, we can boil water in probably like three to five minutes, so. Yeah, and we've been able to fine tune like our foods and how we cook in the backcountry to where we're just boiling water, we're not cooking actual foods in here. So this is the only piece of cook, uh, cookware that we bring. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's a little bulky, but like this is it. Right, and that's for two people. So it's really not that bad, but mm -hmm. we also don't really ever need to wash it because we're just putting water in it. Which so. is nice. <laughs> um, what's really cool about this one specifically is it does have an actual striker on it. So you can light it and cook things without lighters or matches, but you might want to bring them anyways, because you never know what's going to happen. So yeah. yeah, it is convenient though, which is nice. Yep. So that's how we cook food. Ta-da. <laughs> so besides our camp stove, there's a couple other little food items we wanted to talk about. First up is our insulated mugs. Um, we've had people ask about these in the past. They're made by a company called Sunwill, and I promise you, 
This is like the biggest game changer when it comes to food in the backcountry. Man, these mugs, total game changer. Oh yeah. You basically just put your dried foods in here, add your boiling water, wait like 15 minutes, and then when you come back, you're gonna have a nice piping hot meal and you're gonna be stoked yeah. that you have one of these. So, yeah, we don't bring any pots and pans, so this is the only thing that we eat out of. Yeah, so we eat out of these, and of course we make our morning coffee in these as well, and it'll keep your coffee warm for like an hour. So, yeah. highly recommend it. They're a little bit heavier than your typical, you know, camping mug, but the trade-off is definitely worth it. Next, we have sporks. There's nothing special about them. They're plastic. It's got a spoon and a fork, and you eat food with it. <laughs> <laughs> And food storage, if we don't need a bear canister, this is what we're using. It's just a dry bag on Amazon. I don't know if it's for food storage exactly, but it works. It's just a regular dry bag. Yeah, so you'd just put all of your food in, food in there. You'd put anything that has a scent in here just to keep it away from large animals so they're not coming near your tent or yeah. your campsite or you anything. You basically just tie it up, sling it over a tree limb, pull it up nice and high, and yeah, just make sure it's far enough away from your tent so that if anything does pick up the scent, they're gonna go to the bag and not to your tent. Yeah, so. and make sure you bring, we bring paracord, so make sure you bring a rope so you can sling it over. Yeah, and we've been using this the whole time and we've never had a single issue with big animals, so. Rare. If you want the best cup of coffee that you've ever had in your life, maybe not your life, but in the back country for sure. Probably in your life. <laughs> AeroPress is the way to go. You guys already know about the AeroPress. We've talked about it on the channel before and we still stand by it. It is definitely the best way to make coffee in the outdoors. It's super packable, super lightweight, virtually indestructible, and it makes a very high quality cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. We use it all the time. We even use it here at home. So if you're wanting to make coffee, I would recommend checking it out. So your water filtration system is very important. You need water, so get yourself one of these for the backcountry. So we use the Sawyer Mini and the Sawyer Squeeze, and- They're I mean, awesome. They're awesome. We've never gotten sick. I mean, we drink out of streams and creeks and lakes and pretty much anything else you can find that's fresh water, and yeah, they work super well. So we usually just hook them up to like a smart water uh, water bottle because it fits perfectly and it's super convenient. You're just hiking down the trail, see a creek, fill it up and keep hiking. You don't have to like actually stop and filter the water. So yeah, that's super nice too. But just in case, we always bring this as well because water might be scarce or, you know, we need to filter a lot of water. So we'll bring a two liter platypus bladder, which also fits perfectly with these Sawyer filters. And this just allows us to carry water with us. So yeah, something like this or the smart water bottle seems to work really well, but the Sawyer filters are awesome. They're super cheap and they get the job done. A poop shovel. Use it to dig a hole when you need to go poop. And toilet paper. You guys know how to use it. Make sure you bring extra. Yes. <laughs> so a couple of the miscellaneous items. First is our headlamps. Our headlamps are made by BioLite. I don't know the exact model, but I will link it down in the description below. But they're super nice, they're super lightweight, durable, rechargeable, which is a big plus. And I really like that you can change the brightness. So they actually dim. So if you're like reading a book or something, you don't need it that bright. But if you're out walking around in the dark, you might want it a little brighter. So for a light that you put on your head, they're pretty good. And then first aid kit, I just put some band-aids and other things in this little pouch. For toiletries, travel size deodorant, travel size toothpaste, and then this nice compact toothbrush. Our hiking outfit, and starting with my socks, I have these smart wool hiking socks. My pants are made by Backcountry. These are the utility pants. Um, they're super flexible, very durable, and very flattering. Hiking pants for women, sometimes it's hit or miss. But Those look great. are super nice. I like them. Um, and then my shirt is made by Mamut. It's lightweight, it's breathable, it's very soft, and very comfy to wear. As for me, this is pretty much the outfit I wear every day of my life. I have hiking socks made by Columbia. 
And my pants are made by the North Face. I prefer these zip-offs because they're just really nice. You can hike in long pants. It keeps the mosquitoes off of you. And then you can zip them off and go swimming in shorts. So really nice. They dry super fast and they're super comfortable. As far as my shirt, it's just a regular, you know, moisture wicking athletic shirt that I got from Target. And in the summer, these are pretty much the only shirts I ever wear. I have like three different colors and they work great. So these are our outfits for when the weather is nice and warm, but when it's cold out, we'll wear this, which is basically just our fleece jackets over the top of our, you know, summer hiking gear. So my fleece is made by Backcountry. You guys have seen it before in the Kings Canyon video. And it's still my go-to. It's like a lightweight, but warm jacket that's pretty fashionable. I wear this all the time, even when I'm not backpacking. It's got those like dad vibes I look know. to it, you know? Hashtag dad vibes. <laughs> but yeah, so I really like it. Looks super good and keeps me relatively warm. And I have the Patagonia quarter zip fleece. And I really like this because the color, I think it's just super cool. But yeah, it keeps me nice and warm. Kind of wear this for like everyday wear to dress up an outfit. We're big time fleece people. Yeah. We wear our fleeces all the time. It's but cool. It's nice. They do come in handy for backpacking. But if it's extra, extra cold outside, then we'll wear this. Um, this is just a puffy jacket. If it gets cold at night or like super chilly in the morning, this is what's going on over our fleece. I have the Backcountry Silver Fork down jacket. It has these nice pockets in the front to keep your hands warm and also it has a hood. If you get a down jacket, get a hood. It just makes you so much warmer. Definitely get a hood. So as for me, I'm wearing the Rab hooded uh, puffy jacket. It is a down jacket, super warm. Again, has a hood because I promise you when it's really cold out, a beanie is not going to cut it. So yeah, occasionally we'll sleep in these if it's really cold, but we both have our hooded puffies. They're super packable, lightweight, and they keep you nice and warm. I have the Merrill Moab 2 waterproof hiking shoe. It's got that mid-height ankle support, which is nice. Uh, the bottom is super grippy, so I'm not slipping over rocks or anything like that. The only complaint that I have, which I should have known, so this was my bad, but it's waterproof, which is nice if you're wanting a waterproof shoe, um, but it's not very breathable. It's not really lightweight, so. Yeah, if you're looking for something more breathable, this might not be the shoe that you want. I also have the Merrill Moab 2s in the vented version. So a little more breathable, a little more lightweight. Um, your feet don't get as hot, but unfortunately I ripped a hole in the top last year. So I think I'm gonna switch out for these, which are the Mammut Duke & Low GTX. They're actually approach shoes, but I've hiked around in them a little while and I think they would make a pretty good backpacking shoe too. So I'm gonna try them out. I wanna try out the lower ankle and see, you know, if I feel a little more comfortable in that. And we'll see how it goes. If I end up not liking them, I'll probably just get another pair of these. So the last thing that we need to talk about before we wrap up this video is of course our camera gear. We get a lot of questions about this stuff. So our main camera is the Sony a7 III. We shoot on two lenses, the 24 to 105 f4 and the 16 to 35 f4, and we do use ND filters. Um, I recommend the Polar Pro filters. They're just super good, probably the best quality. So that's what we use um, for all of our videos. Now, the most common question I get is about our audio. Everybody always says how amazing our audio is, and this is the microphone we use. It's the Rode Video Micro. Be prepared for bugs if you do come up on this hike and be prepared to hike uphill for a long time. And, and have apples. apples. <laughs> <laughs> you like apples? <laughs> super small, super compact, great for backpacking, and apparently it sounds really good. So we never use lavaliers, we never use audio recorders. It's literally just this. So that's it. Yeah, and if you're wondering who's shooting us when we're not behind the camera, it's the tripod. Yes, so we use the Peak Design Travel Tripod, and every time you see a shot of me and Victoria walking past the camera, it's just on a tripod, and then one of us has to go back and <laughs> pick it up again, so. And yeah. the last thing is this power bank by Power Rad. It has this nice universal cable attachment, and it keeps all of our batter, uh, camera batteries charged, and our phones charged as well. Yeah, it keeps pretty much everything charged, and of course, we do always carry our phones 
Not that it matters, but I use the Google Pixel 5. And we rely on these pretty heavily for like navigation and maps and location and all that stuff. The most important thing is that you're able to keep it charged. So I would highly recommend getting a power bank if you're going to be using your phone out in the backcountry. But I think that's pretty much it. That's it. So that's <laughs> literally all of the gear that we use for our backpacking and for the videos that you guys see. So if you have any questions, of course, you can leave a comment down below or send us a DM on Instagram, but We'll link everything in the description below. Yeah, so you can check out every single item that you saw in today's video. But yeah. I think that's gonna do it. Do us a huge favor, subscribe to the channel if you liked this video or if you like our backpacking videos. We would really appreciate it. Every, you know, support helps, so. Yeah, thank you. But that's all we had for you. All so right. we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Bye everyone.